These are the tools you'll need to change the brake pads and discs. A pair of pliers to take the plastic caps off the nuts if you've got them. A 12 and 13mm spanner to undo the brake caliper. A 19mm socket or spanner to undo the large bolts that hold the caliper on. A 5mm allen key and a screwdriver to push the piston back. To remove the plastic nut caps just get a pair of pliers and get hold of it and then just give it a little wiggle and just pull it gently and they come off. Make sure you loosen all the wheel nuts before you jack the car up otherwise you won't be able to undo them. The best place to jack it up is where the wishbone is where the uh, bolt goes through just underneath there. Now as we're changing the discs and the pads you need to undo this bolt here it's a five millimeter allen bolt so if you put the screwdriver in the vented disc that stops it turning round and then just get your allen key and undo it and to make it easier to get to the bolts turn the steering all the way towards the side you're working on makes it a bit easier to get to the bolts on the back now before we undo any bolts we want to push the piston back in so you can put your new brake pads in and the easiest way to do this is to get your screwdriver on the edge of the disc and then just push gently to the right this is for the near side wheel and just, you can see it's just slowly slowly moving and once you've got a little gap there you can get your screwdriver between the piston and the brake pad and again just gently push it and it just slowly slowly goes back I'm levering against the brake pad so it won't do any damage to the disc if you wanted to keep it and once you've got a, a nice big gap there use something a little bit larger to push it back so I'm going to use a big spanner and just push it against the edge of the piston there keep pushing and just keep pushing until it goes all the way back and then you can get your new brake pads in watch out for the brake fluid overflowing from the brake fluid reservoir because if someone's topped it up then it might overflow so watch out for that so next we want to undo the two bolts here so the bottom bolt is a 12 millimeter And just undo that until it's all the way undone and then once you've done that undo the top caliper bolt which is 13 millimeters and then undo both these bolts and I'll show you what happens next so with both the bottom and the top bolt undone you can now lift the caliper away so just get hold of it and it just lifts away be careful not to bend the brake pipe too much and just tuck that out of the way so it's not in your way too much now you need a 19 mil spanner to undo these two big ones so we've got to undo that one which is quite tight because that holds the support for the brake pads and then you undo this one here which is also 19 mil and I'll come back to that after I've done that so next you want to take the brake pads out, so just lift them out both sides and you've got these anti-rattle clips note which way round they go and they just lift off and you've got one at the top there as well and just pull it off nice and easy you get new ones with the, uh, the Vauxhall brake pads and then that one and that's that and now I've undone these big 19mm bolts and that one they were very stiff because they've got the thread lock on them uh, if you've got some thread lock to put a little bit back on when you're doing back up because it's important they don't come out and then you can lift your caliper casing off and these should be 
free, freely moving. If they're not, you could take them apart and re-grease them. But these ones are nice and greased. I can feel the, the grease stiffness there. So now, the disc can be taken off. And it's all ready for the new one to go on. So now it's time to put the new disc on. Make sure the holes line up so you've got three holes at the bottom there and the fixing screw is at the top. So just off it up. So the holes all line up, all the holes line up like that. And then put your fixing screw in the top hole. So when you do up the fixing screw, don't do it too tight because the wheel bolts hold the disc nice and tightly. So it just holds it in place while you take it apart and put it back together. So next we put the caliper on. So once you've got the caliper back on and the thread started by hand, then do it up with the spanner or ratchet until it's nice and tight. All right, now we've done those two big bolts up, it's time to put the anti-rattle clips on. So when you put them on, the little tag here goes towards the outside and the bit the clips on goes towards you. So you just push it on And that's it. So for the other side you need the clip to look like this with the little tag on the outside and the clippy bit towards you and again just push it on until it clicks. That's it. And then for the upper ones you have the tag on the outside again and the clip towards you and again it just, just clips on. Like so. So again, have the little tab facing outwards and the clip towards you, and then just push that on there. And that's all the anti rattle clips. Now, one of the pads has got the little metal squirrel thing sticking out of it. What that does is it rubs on the disc when the pads get low, which lets you know they need changing. Now, you should fit this to the near side wheel on the inside of the disc. So you put the bottom in first, and then the top will just get a good view there. The top just goes in and clips in, and that's the top one done. And then take the next pad, and again just put the bottom in first, and then you put the top in. And if you can see that, you just push it until it goes into there, and that's it. So now we have the pads fitted, it's time to put the caliper on. Now these little piston things, make sure they're pushed in so they don't catch. And the best way to do this is to just put the top one in first. And if you look closely, you'll see there's a flat on there, and you've got to line that up like that. And then just put the bolt in loosely and that will help with putting it back together. So now we've got that top bolt in loosely we need to offer it up so just give it a little wiggle and because the piston is right back it goes on nice and easily and then the bottom one make sure the flat is lined up and then remember that it's the 12mm bolt in the bottom and just do it up by hand and just finish it off with the spanner so that's the bottom one and the top one so finish that off with the spanner and that's it so we're ready to go just need to pump the brake pedal to make sure that the pads are pushed up against the disc so just to recap you've got That's the 19 millimeter bolt there. It needs to be very tight. And the bottom one here needs to be very tight as well. That's a 12 millimeter nut. And this is a 13 millimeter nut. The anti-rattle clips, as you can see, should look like that. And like that. And it's all ready to go back together.